Okay, now let's look at glycolysis in terms of what it produces and how much energy is required and generated and get these in your notes. Write that the 6-carbon glucose molecule is converted to two 3-carbon pyruvate molecules which produces four ATP molecules and two NADH molecules. Now, also write that this glycolysis process costs the cell two ATPs. So the actual net production of glycolysis is two ATPs and two NADHs, which will be moved and used in the Krebs cycle. So again, four total ATPs are generated, but it costs them two, remember? Uh, the currency thing, it costs the, the glycolysis costs the cell two ATPs, so it only nets two ATPs out of glycoly glycolysis, uh, not that much. So pretty inefficient uh, per energy production wise. Also write in your notes that the pyruvate molecules create a branching point. And by that we mean that if oxygen is present, the molecules are moved into the mitochondrial matrix to be used in the Krebs cycle in aerobic respiration. However, write that if oxygen is not present, then these pyruvate molecules will be used in the fermentation process in anaerobic respiration. Now, this is also a good time to write in your notes that this process of cellular respiration is part of what's called the cell's metabolism. Now, metabolism is defined, we don't really define a lot in this class, but the definition of metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that occur in the cell in order to produce energy in the form of ATP. So we're looking at one, albeit large part, of the cell's metabolism, but it's the sum of all the chemical reactions um, that define exactly what metabolism is. Now let's move on to the phases two and three of cellular respiration, which involve the oxidation of the pyruvate molecule we just saw produced and the Krebs cycle. Remember, we're now moving inside the mitochondria from the cytosol where glycolysis occurred. More specifically, we're moving into the mitochondrial matrix which you should already know is an inner fluid filled space and the fluid is similar to the cytosol which should also be no surprise since the mitochondria was most likely its own bacteria at one time. You should also already know that this is that it's in the mitochondrial matrix where the Krebs cycle happens and is also the location for the mitochondrial DNA, ribosomes and its enzymes. Now, we'll also be inside the mitochondrial membrane that surrounds the mitochondria. <clears throat> you should also know that, excuse me, that this membrane consists of a smooth outer membrane and a highly folded inner membrane called the cristae. And that this space is filled with fluid as well. Again, these are things that will be included in a question or questions somewhere on the AP bio exam. So knowing the structure of the mitochondria and where all three phases of uh, respiration happen, important. Now again, I know you aren't artists, but I would like you to get this diagram in your notes right now labeled correctly so we can use it in our discussion in this podcast. So on the left, you can see the products of glycolysis and where they're going. Let's get their destinations, in other words, where they're going in your notes. First, write in your notes that ATP is that ATP that's produced will be used for something called substrate level phosphorylation. And you see it down here. Substrate level phosphorylation. Now remember, ATP is the energy source. So this energy from this ATP is going to be used for something called substrate level phosphorylation. Now, you recognize now that that's the breaking off of a phosphate to produce energy and ADP 
and then at some point in time adding it back to reform ATP in that cycle we've talked about lots. Now also write that the pyruvate molecules enter the mitochondrial matrix to be used in the Krebs cycle. Now also write that the electrons now carried by NADPH or I'm sorry NADH uh, the NADH molecule will be used in the electron transport chain. Here you see it right here. The electron transport chain. I said NADPH. That's not right. That's photosynthesis. And that's a good way to remember it. The P in NADPH is in photosynthesis. NADH is in respiration. So now these electrons move to the electron transport chain to reform ATP during oxidative phosphorylation, which we've talked about lots of times. Also notice and write that the other electron carrier, FADH2, will also be used in the electron transport chain in oxidative phosphorylation, uh, the reforming of ATP. So again, we're, we're going to be using some ATP in this process and where will they get the ATPs? Well, remember, two of these are produced in glycolysis. So that's the, the energy um, uh, source for the second phase of Krebs cycle and the third phase electro electron transport chain. Now let's follow our pyruvate molecules. But first recall our discussion of combustion and respiration. Remember that we said that combustion is burning a fuel all in one step, right? An example would be burning natural gas or methane. And I think we used um, a campfire as an example in the last podcast. Now, get in your notes that methane or propane or natural gas all are good fuel sources because they, their carbon molecules have all been fully reduced so their electrons are available to be oxidized again. That's really important for you to understand. So that's why they're good sources of fuels, because those electrons are available to be oxidized. Now, in comparison, carbon dioxide's been fully oxidized. So we can't get any more energy out of it, right? Because there's no available electrons to be reduced. So because of that, you can see what happens to carbon dioxide it now gets given off into the atmosphere because it's not useful anymore. Now, so as a result, we have a three-step oxidation process for pyruvate. We need to get in your notes. And in the process, we'll do some accounting as well of the carbons because we're, we're dealing with two three carbon molecules we have to work with, right? That was the net result now of glycolysis. Remember, we had a six carbon molecule. We started with that glucose molecule, and we split it into two three carbon molecules. Now, write that in step one, two carbon dioxides are released back into the atmosphere. So there's two of our six carbons being used up. Remember, we saw that in the last... Um, uh, slide and you see it down here now in our yield this carbon dioxide is going to be given off into the atmosphere now again in your mind why is carbon dioxide being released right because now it's been completely oxidized and therefore has already released all the energy it can release so it's no longer available to the cell cell doesn't need it cell releases it um, back into the atmosphere. And again, that's what you breathe out. You're breathing out a waste product, carbon dioxide, because your body can't use it. Uh, there's nothing for available for it because it's already been oxidized. So it breathes it out as a waste product. And remember then, that's good for the plants because the plants then take it in and they use that carbon dioxide in photosynthesis. Now, <clears throat> remember that the point of all this is to make ATP. That's the whole point of cellular respiration, is to generate energy. And we've only generated two ATPs, and we're using those now in the Krebs cycle. 
So at some point in time, you've got to be asking yourself, where is all the ATP? Well, that's where we're heading. In step two, two NAD molecules are reduced by adding hydrogen ions. Two NAD molecules, you see right here, two NAD molecules are reduced by adding hydrogens and their electrons, which result in the production of two NADHs. Now, we're not using any carbons here. We've used uh, two carbons now as carbon dioxide, but we've now um, added hydrogen. Remember, we've reduced NADH, oil rig reduction is gain. We've added now electrons uh, from the hydrogen now by reducing NAD. And we're going to use that NADH molecule. Now, again, it's all to generate ATP. Now, so we're going to get two NADHs as a net result of that. Okay, now in step three, remember you're writing all this down. In step three, two acetyl-CoA, here you see the acetyl-CoAs right here, are also produced, whoops, sorry, that was Mr. Krebs. The, uh, so two acetyl-CoA molecules are also produced which will be used in the Krebs cycle. So there's our last four of six carbon molecules being used is in acetyl-CoA. So again, look at the total yield at the bottom. For each pyruvate, we get three substances produced. <clears throat> A two carbon sugar called acetyl-CoA, one NADH molecule, and a molecule of carbon dioxide. Now, the 2X here, can you, can you guess why the 2X is down there? Right, because we started with two pyruvate molecules. Why two? Because we broke down the six carbon um, glucose molecule into two, six, or three carbon pyruvates. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now let's move on to the Krebs cycle, which was discovered, probably should write this down, I, I, I've not seen it on an exam in a long time, but you just never know. I mean, they're not, all, they're not about d dates and names, but who knows if someone thinks a question is significant, you might see it. So uh, the Krebs cycle was discovered in 1937 uh, and explained fully in by 1953 by a guy named Hans Krebs. You see him right here. He's kind of a... Yeah, I, I guess he's not a contemporary. 80s is my contemporary, I guess, not yours. So the name makes sense, right? The Krebs cycle makes sense because it was discovered and explained by a guy named Hans Krebs. Now, there was probably a bunch of research done prior to that, but he's the guy that really crystallized it. The Krebs cycle is also referred to as the citric acid cycle. You'll need to write that down. And you'll see why here in the next slide. <clears throat> So write in your notes that the Krebs cycle is an eight-step pathway and that each of these steps is catalyzed by a specific enzyme. That should be no surprise. Also write that this will be describing the catabolism or the breakdown of the six-carbon citrate molecule that we'll see here in a second. Hmm, where will those six carbons come from? Any guesses? If you said from the two three-carbon pyruvate molecules, you'd be correct, specifically from the acetyl-CoA molecules that we produced uh, prior to them entering the Krebs cycle. Okay, that's it for part three. We're getting ready to look at the Krebs cycle more specifically uh, in the next podcast. So. Take a picture of those notes, submit them to Moodle, grab that part three study guide, answer the questions, and I'll see you back here in respiration part four. Bye.